Good morning and welcome to your Thursday edition of The Morning Jog. My name is Matt Cohan and I'm joined as always by the extremely infectious Francis Ellis and Robbie Berger. Fellas, hi there. Digging those intros, really digging these intros. I really am. That's a, those are fighting words these days, calling someone infectious. Heavens to Betsy. I'll, I'll let our uh, listeners decipher whether that's a praise or a burn. But if you guys yeah. just want to release those uh, test results, that'll be, that would help clear things up. <clears throat> All right, fellas, let's start off today with a little throwback Thursday. I may be dating myself with this name drop. Kurt Loader best known for his role at MTV News, turned 75 on Tuesday. Royal Bible's Cass Anderson tweeted this out, and people went absolutely bonkers. It was trending on Twitter, with people wondering where the hell the time has gone. Kurt was born in 1945. Francis, as a guy who grew up in the 90s, were you shocked to learn that Kurt Loder may be on death's doorstep? You know, the thing is, is that Kurt Loder was always an adult to me. Like, he was the guy on MTV where you were like, oh, that's them trying to be serious. You know, in between Carson Daly on TRL and all that, that was my young world. And then Kurt Loder would come on and offer like a 20-second a news brief about something. And I always was like, why do, why do we need to see this old man? So he's been old to me my whole life. Um finding out that he's 75 i it i guess i guess it's yeah i guess that's a weirdly high number but at the same time 75 is the new 55 you know what i mean yeah so i don't know i hate to give you a kind of lukewarm take but it's it didn't blow my socks off that much yeah i mean when i learned that kurt is one day older than bob seeger who actually turned 75 yesterday it, i found that wild because every word that bob has sang for the past 30 years sounds like his last he's he's like the chris berman of the music industry so <laughs> yeah. that's that kind of drove the point home for me robbie as a represent as a representative of the younger generation what does the name kurt loader mean to you well francis you were worried about a nuke warm take i i am worried about a freezing cold take right now um i saw this in our pre-show and, and i tried to research it and Kind of act like I knew, um, but that wouldn't do the show justice. It, it really wouldn't. My MTV is Rob Deirdrick's Fantasy Factory, uh, The Hills, Laguna Beach. That is, <laughs> as Mr. Ellis is losing his shit over there, um, that is my MTV. And I got to be I gotta be quite frank, I got no idea who this guy is. Are you Should familiar I with the, uh, the VJ Jesse Camp? That, that predates you. You're 27, right? I'm getting older and older on the uh, – I mean, I'm getting colder and colder. 27, yeah. You didn't, were watching Deidre. Didn't Sway – it was Sw Kurt Loder and Sway were the guys who did the news, right? Yeah. Sway is still very relevant. But and Sway is crushing it now as a, as a radio guy. Yeah. But in Kurt my defense, at, at the age of 27, do I deserve to get some heat for this? And if so, I'll take it. But do I? Dude, I think I think MTV in its early days, like base from what we remember it being, which was like making the video and then uh, you know cribs, uh, and cribs, then it went to we like go. dorm hunters or whatever that show yeah. was. Yes, room yes. raiders, room raiders, room raiders. and then they there started getting Bingo. into like yeah, then they started getting into like the reality stuff. Jersey Shore was a huge hit, but that going from TRL the, to whatever came next was such a sharp drop off, a, a change. It was so dramatic that if you weren't in there before, you would never have known what they were. Because MTV was, was the thing at, at one point, no? It was the only place you could watch music videos. Yeah, you, yeah. there was no YouTube. Yeah, the so like, Foxy Brown videos that came out, that would be, as a budding kid, I'd, like, wait for that. And then Loader would come on, dry as wallpaper, and I'd be like, all right, dude, get off the screen. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, like, a huge – that was, like, a big cultural thing. And it's amazing that you grew up on Rob Deirdrick or, you know, that that's a com – that completely – Let me tell you, I, I could tell you things about Kristen Cavallari that, that would just yeah. rock your world. 
Mm. Yeah. Wow. So you probably think Kurt Loder is like a, a porn name or some porn star or something. Somewhat, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's address a topic that you may be a little more familiar with, and it's not wearing protection. A 68-year-old man was arrested in Michigan after he entered a Dollar Tree on Saturday and wiped his face on an employee's shirt. The man entered the store around 1.30 without a mask, despite an executive order in the state requiring patrons in enclosed public spaces to wear one at all times. According to police, an employee had told the man he needed to wear a face mask to remain in the store. He responded by saying, quote, here, I'll just use this as a mask before wiping his nose and face on the employee's shirt, leaving behind, quote, bodily fluids. He is facing misdemeanor charges of assault and battery. Robbie, what's the proper punishment for this man? Well, I'll tell you, for the guy being 68 years old to have that type of energy, I, I do tip my cap to him on that. My dad's 65, and no matter how pissed off he is, I, I just don't see him having the energy to go that far with it. <laughs> Here's what we got to really look at. And, you know, now we're starting to reopen some of these stores and stuff. We should be extra cautious on the Dollar Tree stores, the Walmarts, the Denny's. These are the places that can cause problems because there's just no rules. This is not happening at a Trader Joe's. This is not happening at a, a Whole Foods. These are the places that shit can really pop off. You're seeing it already. The old man, 68 years old, scratching and clawing. I, I tip my cap to him for there, but a dirtbag move. Yeah, Robbie, you, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that if you're buying something from the Dollar Tree, it probably has snot on it anyway. So, <laughs> I mean, I think we can put this in context. Francis, that's, what do you think? That's yeah. where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah, I, two thoughts. The first is uh, I, I've seen Dollar Trees before. But it's never even crossed my mind to go into one. <laughs> and I don't even think I'm being snobby. I, I just think that every, anything you could buy in there is going to break or is some worse version of what you could get at a CVS or wherever, you, you know. So I, I was kind of surprised to find that those are still in businesses and certainly surprised to find that those are deemed essential businesses unless Michigan is already opening up and that, that whatever. The second thing I would say is this guy, this old man, 68 years old, using another person's shirt to wipe your nose and face, it, it kind of reminds me of like the and one mixtape tour. Like he's the skip to my loo of old men. <laughs> like to have the audacity, it's the equivalent of throwing the ball off the guy's head and then draining a jumper like him and being like it through the oh, shirt yeah. around yeah. Oh, and then taking your shirt <laughs> such a dirty Phenomenal move take. it's Phenomenal. so it's i could just see a crowd of old people in the bleachers going like oh <laughs> that's what i that's what i imagine in that scene so i mean i guess at some point you've just lived all, long enough you're not afraid of repercussions anymore and i hope to get to that age someday Hip to my low. <laughs> that is a throwback right there. And while we're on the topic of petty crimes, fellas, Charles Barkley committed the crime of telling the truth, and he's still paying for it, guys. Barkley admits he's still, quote, really, really sad about the fact that his longtime friend with, friendship with Michael Jordan deteriorated years, years ago because of critical comments Barkley made on, a nas on national television about the way Jordan ran the Charlotte Bobcats. Barkley was quoted this week saying, the thing that bothered me was mo most about the whole thing. I don't think that I said anything that bad, Barkley said. I'm pretty sure I said, as much as I love Michael, until he stops hiring them kiss asses and his best friends, he's never going to be successful as a general manager. And I remember pretty much verbatim I said that. And the thing that really pissed me off about it later is that Phil Jackson said the exact same thing. Francis, who's at fault here? Well, look, I think Michael Jordan's, you know, competitiveness kind of leaks into every aspect of his life, right? And that would include forgiveness. I don't think that his relentless competitiveness allows him to forgive people. Or even if he were to recognize 
that he was right, that Charles Barkley, what he said was right, he can't acknowledge it because that's like admitting defeat. I mean, have you ever seen Michael Jordan apologize or say like, you know, has he ever forgotten anything? He's still um, calling Isaiah Thomas an asshole 30 years later after he didn't yeah. shake his hand. That, that I get a little bit more, though, yeah. because those, those Pistons beat, beat him up. And, you know, it was ridiculous. But this – Charles Barkley is a, a national treasure in that he always speaks his mind. He is completely uncut and uncensored in everything that he says. And I guess, it, you know, you can't expect Charles Barkley to mince his words ever. And I guess we can't expect Michael Jordan ever to forget something like this. So it's like that Joker line where like an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. I, you know, it's too bad, obviously, but uh, I don't see either of them bending to each other's uh, side. That's a good point, Francis. Robbie? Well, Francis, I think you've nailed it with, with Charles Barkley being a national treasure because he is. And what, what makes him a national treasure, again, is he speaks his mind. And, and I'm upset about with Jordan for this because it's so true. I mean, the, the Hornets have been a joke. Nobody talks about it because it's in Charlotte and nobody in Charlotte really cares about the NBA. And, and be quite frank. Jordan's been a disaster as a GM. So what's he supposed to go up there and say? Speaking of Phil Jackson, Phil Jackson was the general manager of the New York Knicks. And I think if you ask Phil Jackson the worst time in his career, I think he would say when he was general manager for the New York Knicks, he did a terrible job and he deserved to hear it mostly because especially he was in New York, you're going to hear it. So it bothers me that Jordan, what well, would be such a great relationship and so good to see them talk with how great, you know, Barkley is and his, that Jordan just doesn't get that. If, if Jordan was the GM for the Cleveland Browns, does he expect Barkley to go on there and talk about how great the Cleveland Browns have been? They haven't. They've been right. terrible. So it, it does bother me that Jordan – you can't let that go because he really should because Barkley's not wrong and he should know that that's the way Chuck is. He speaks his mind and he speaks the truth. Yeah. And it's really sad because all of the footage and the photos of them together, they look like they're having the, it's they the look best. like pigs and shit. Mm-hmm. They look like they're having the best time. It's and the like best. Jordan's hung up on this little, he's taking his ball and going home. It's petty. Uh, it's bitchy. And I don't know. It's kind of like the Jordan's blind spot. That's really unfortunate. And like Francis said, too, I just don't see one of them burying it either. They're, they're not the type that would make the phone call right. and apologize. Right. So I don't think you'll see a time where this is over. And you're right, Matt, they did get along. That's why I get so fired up about this. You know what's funny is, is there anybody on earth for whom being his friend uh, makes us think more of that person? Meaning? Like, and obviously Michael Jordan is who I'm talking about, right? So, like, when you find out that Michael Jordan really likes someone or really gets along with someone, like, watching Michael Jordan's eulogy for Kobe Bryant made me like Kobe Bryant so much more. Right. Um, And then finding out that Michael Jordan doesn't have that kind of relationship with LeBron made me like LeBron less. I, I, it's, it's crazy to think that, someone can affect my view of other people by virtue of his relationship with that person so much. Exactly. And it's almost like, I don't know if I would be friends with Jordan. Yeah. I can look at him from afar and be like, this guy is amazing, but he's a fucking sociopath. Like, and that's what we all applaud him for is like being cutthroat and ruthless. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it kind of, yeah, it flies in the face of all logic. Yeah. I would not enjoy hanging out with Michael Jordan. I I just, I would not be myself. I'd be miserable. (laughs) I'd be completely fake. I'd be terrified the entire time. You'd be chomping down cigars, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Plus Francis, we all, we all know how you feel about that cigar smoke leaking (laughs) on me. I have like three or four too. And, and just, you know, like have to go home, see my parents for a week and recuperate. Death wish. All right, fellas. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your Thursday edition of the Morning Jog. We will be right back here after the weekend. Thank you for listening. Be safe and wear protection. Peace. Take care, folks.